and welcome back everybody to my channel today we're going to be putting front brakes on this Ford Explorer and first of all but of course we're going to start by lifting the Explorer up I'm starting on the passenger side or the right side with the jack there lifting it up furthermore I'm using the control arm the bottom of it there to lift it up and then get it up in the air we're going to slide a jack stand underneath the frame and get it in place firmly there that it's holding good and then we're going to take and let the explorer down on the jack stand and there it's resting safely and besides the safety aspect another plus of using the jack stand and get the jack out of her way and the jack stands back far enough it's not going to be in our way of working and and we'll get the tire and wheel off using the handy dandy cordless impact wrench saves some twisting and and turning every little bit helps especially the older you get and there we got the lug nuts off and off comes your tire and wheel and we'll get that rolled back out of the way if your shops like mine there's stuff every place and here we're going to take and remove the caliber bolts using a 14 millimeter socket i don't know why the stupid camera didn't want to focus on it but okay now we're going to loosen the top in here and then we're going to go take and go reach down and loosen the bottom caliber bolt before we take them out completely either one of them and in the case of this explorer once they were initially air broke free they turned out just with your fingers i'm actually multitasking here we're turning the top and the bottom and out although that top and had to tighten up i spoke too soon but they're not real tight i could say but they are a fine thread bolt you seem to turn and turn until they ever do come out of their spot as you're coming out with them and still have to go back and get on it with the wrench again but anyhow they're turning out now we're turning these out here nice and easy from this point forward i don't think any more tightening up nope and now we can just take and pull our caliber back off and lay that out of the way you don't want it to hang by the brake hoses in the case of this explorer it sits on the upper control arm real nice and we'll slide our brake pads out, take the outboard shoe off first. That one wasn't really down that far. And this inboard one, now that was getting down pretty good there. It would have went a while, but I figured it was time to replace them. Now pull our brake slide pins out, and we'll be lubing these up before we put them back in. This is something if you live in a climate with lots of salt and that they can get rusted and stuck up now these aren't real bad because i had uh, about a year ago lubed them up pulled them out when i rotated the tires and now we get these the new brake lining do come with new clips that hold the pads to keep them from rattling and we'll pull those out so we'll replace them probably could have just reused them but since they came with new ones we'll use them up in addition in this video i'm also only replacing the brake pads not the rotors it don't tremble or nothing and that's one reason that inboard shoe was getting down i did want to get it before i got metal to metal and then you would have needed the rotors and there's our new brake pads bought them on ebay i mean excuse me amazon take and put a link in the description there wagner's and open the box and there's our little instructions which is pretty much self-explanatory if you've done it before there's our new brake pads and the clips that i was saying about and this separate bag of miscellaneous along with the, which you'll see in a little bit this little tube of grease that lubricates your slides up and your put on the tips of your brake pads and there's the pads laying out and i'm looking at them here you want to check now in this case they're the same inboard and outboard there's no wear indicators on them and there's no difference between the inboard and outboard but that's not always the case but in this one it is Alrighty, now over here at the workbench we're going to take and pull this little rubber boot off the pen and we're going to take and wipe the grease off like i say this isn't rusted or anything that much and because like i said i did what i said about a year ago i've had these already and then yeah you're stuck getting the caliber or at least the bracket i've had them rusted fast you couldn't get them out whatsoever but again no problem on that and then we we'll pull the little rubber boot off of this one and wipe the old grease off and like I say, we'll put some new on it. Like I say, I don't need to go take and a lot of times on these, if you do get them out there rusty, you got to at least go visit the the wire wheel and the bench grinder and clean them up. But today, we get to skip that on this project. 
And here is the included grease. I actually said two, but it's actually like in a little bag. I wouldn't even personally probably mess with it. I just used my own, but for purpose of the video, we'll use this. It's not really enough. I like to put more on it, but we'll use. And then we're still going to, in a minute or so here, add more to it. Put a little dab here on it and slide it around with our fingers and just coat it up. Again, It's they're not very generous with it. One way or the other, when it comes to these brake sliding pins, you do want to be sure they are working freely because these will cause you a lot of trouble and people think everything else is going wrong when it's really just these caliper pins not sliding properly and releasing the brake. Yeah, they'll cause brakes to hang up, get hot, or if they stick that they're not really putting pressure against the rotor you'll have a low pedal yeah they can cause all sorts of grief so be sure to lube them be sure they are sliding easy uh, make the function of the caliber properly work and we're only never going to slide the rubber boot back on the end of it which is surprisingly that's good a lot of times these are cracked and tore they'll tear when you tear them apart and that's something you should replace because it'll get water and that in them but these are Again, good to go. Well, I know since it's been in my possession, I've taken care of it. It's actually my mother's vehicle. I lube them up usually every spring before inspection. And then I'm going to take and add some grease. As I said, for one, I want to pack it down in this boot. This is sort of gives it a reserve as it's sliding back and forth there. And uh, many times throughout the course of driving the vehicle, it'll keep it lubed up, hopefully. In my videos, my repair videos, I try to include all these little details. Maybe a person knows, and maybe they don't. And I, if you know, well, then just skip to another part. And if you don't, well, hopefully the information will save you some grief down the road. And we're packing the other one up with grease. And we'll soon go over here and be putting them back in the vehicle. I think that's pretty decent about right now on them. Yeah, as promised, we're back here at the Explorer. There's the brake caliber bracket, and we're going to slide this fella in there at the bottom and in here. And besides, I said earlier on the boot keeping the moisture out, the boot actually serves to help them move back and forth. You see, when you push, they're like springy. They spring back and forth there real easy when they're functioning properly and they're lubed up. And right now we're going to put these brake anti-rattle clips back in. These are sort of a pain. It's sort of tricky. To, actually, later in the video, there will be timestamps in this video. The one on the other side, I get a better picture of how it does clip in. But you push, work around. It's right in the center of the bracket. There's like a ear to got to go down in that's tricky to get. But again, enough twisting around in that. There that one's in. And we're going to take and we'll make sure it is down in place good. If they're not in place good, your brake pad really won't go on and it'll stick. And then we're going to put the upper one in. There's looking up while I'm doing it. Yeah, I figure give you a little different view on it there. It'll help you see it being clipped into place. Again, they'll only go one way. You can see that in the video. And finally, reaching around there. When they go, you sort of can feel they like firmly sit in and they're flush with the brake caliber bracket. And there's a close up of it in place. I say right in the center is right where that's got to sit in. It's a little bit of a tricky spot to get. And there's a look at the top and the bottom again. I say it'll give you some different views of what you're shooting for in the end result on it. And I'm already back with this, the big bag of grease to come with this. Just put a little drop on those ends of the ears of the brake pads. You don't want it on the lining, but just right on the ends. It helps keep the pads sliding back and forth. Actually, they don't take much. And again, they didn't give you much with it. And we'll take and sit that in. I'm going to start with sitting like the bottom of the pad in. Just press down some, and then you got to like on the those brake clips there, push forward on in there, and it'll pop right into place. And there is the outboard one in. Alrighty, one good turn deserves another. We're going to take and put a little bit of grease on the ends of the, the metal backing on these brake lining. And like I say, so we did on the outboard one, just same old, same old. There's something with brakes there, you sort of... You just repeat the steps in most cases on it and take, I'm going to put the same deal, put the bottom of the 
Just pad in, press down, and then push forward on that clip at the top until it does, finally, maybe, maybe not. Maybe we're going to have to take and get help on this one. You know, it's being stubborn, but yeah, there it went in. And you can sort of test it once they're in. You can take, see how they slide back and forth. And there you like take your hand and fingers against it. You can like simulate applying the brakes and see if they release easy. Here's another view of me doing that. It's just sort of a little check that they are working and sh not going to stick. And there's a close-up of those brake anti-rattle clips into place. Again, watch later in the video I showed the other side there from a little different view of point on it and now it's time to put the caliber back on needless to say though before the caliber goes back on we have to press the piston back in well pistons in this case it's a dual caliber piston I have this fancy little brake disc tool I bought a while ago it wasn't that much money for years I just used a C-clamp but on these dual piston calibers I do find this easier the C-clamp work good you can still do the C-clamp but you gotta sort of have two C-clamps and like I say this is a lot more convenient and then we'll speed up the operation here a little bit and just tighten them in and these should go in with no real major amount of effort if you're having trouble compressing these pistons in a brake caliber you either have a caliber that's sticking or a brake flex hose which honestly the safe answer I always replace both but in this case they go back in just like they should no problem and you want to like I say turn them back in as far as you can and I'm using an old brake pad against the pistons in the caliber there for like I say to press against it and it's just about there and then we just simply got to take and literally loosen it there to take it back out of place because again the piston went in as it should and there it is nice and flush the pistons with the brake caliber body okay now providing you did take and you got the pistons the whole way in it should slide on effortlessly over the new brake pads and it did sometimes you got to watch when you're going on those brake pins will stick out a little bit far you got to press them in a little bit and and we're going to start our both in finger tight don't tighten either one up till you get them both in finger tight they were like say you might have an alignment issue and then end up still loosening it up but it's going in with no problem the top one and we're going to take and we'll put our bottom one in yet yeah i know that was a smart statement of course we're going to put the bottom bolt back in but anyhow and there that one's turning in like i say get that tightened up here a few threads and we'll grab our ratchet and our 14 millimeter socket here and we will snug these up so like i say don't fall around and rattle and all that good stuff and it's safe wouldn't want that already tighten these up good i is i'm sure a technical torque on it i've never on them worried about them just make them fairly snug and then i always go back and then sort of just give them like another quarter of a turn Probably, I'm going to say just roughly around 40 foot pounds is probably about what pressure I'm applying, but just common sense. And now it's time to put our tire and wheel back on. Yeah, once we get it over here, lift it up into place, all that good stuff. It's a hot day out. It's <laughs> making me sweat here a little bit, by golly. That there, we got it up on the lug nut studs and then get our lug nuts started on finger tight and then we'll soon be ready here to move onwards yeah i don't know if your explorer has these same style wheels or not they're a little bit hard they sit down in a recessed lug nuts they're hard to start on i know they're a pretty popular wheel on these explorers i probably is some other styles it's not as bad but and we'll take and we'll snug them up here with the impact wrench in a star-shaped pattern working back and forth before we, like I say, get it back down on the ground and go back around and just sort of a little bit more way at the end. I, now this is a different roll on the torque thing. Now I do check them with the torque wrench because of those aluminum wheels, but I'll do that after the other side's done. And now we're going to jack it up back up and get the jack stand out from under and I, cause i'm just working one side at a time on this today just sort of like the average person be like working in their driveway or something with one jack at hand and such and now we got it clear of the jack stand and we'll get our jack stand bend down here slid out from under the frame and that's one thing with this explorer nice frame lots of place to 
put the jack stand securely. There's not really any big magic like some unit body curves. There isn't a lot of places to stick a jack stand. And back down to earth it is until we lift it up on the other side. And here comes the jack around. Yeah, speaking of unibody and explorer, that's something I find shocking. The style, this is the last generation of explorers. It is a full frame sport utility vehicle because the replacement, the next generation, I think, are unibody. But anyhow, now we're lifting it up the control arm again and got our tire. If you get the tire about probably about four or five inches off the ground, slide the jack stand under the frame. And I can say, and on these jack stands, like up to that first notch, when you let it down, the tire's not actually, it'll clear the concrete, so it'll spin around. And I'll get back around here, and there it is. It's set down on the stand, and the well one's off the ground, I mean the tire's off the ground, and off comes the lug nuts with our handy-dandy cordless impact again. Yeah, that's something. I do have an air compressor, but for like six years now, I haven't used nothing but these cordless impact wrenches. I haven't used an air one in so long. They work just as good as every air one I've ever had. I know there's better air ones than what I used to buy, but yeah, and you don't have to, well, go run and get the air hose. Okay, here we're down to the meat and potatoes, so to speak, or the caliber and the pads on the driver's side, starting with loosening our caliber bolts up to begin and as the other side they're turning free easy at least one thing on these if you would break a bolt off in that caliber pin well you get the pin out you can buy pins and bolt the kit to the parts store not like you have to drill holes or anything if one of these would snap off it's not the end of the world except for a trip to the parts store to get parts Okay, I got the bottom one out. Now we're getting the top one out. Now we're just going to take and slide our caliber back off as before and set it up on the control arm. Like I say, it sits nice on this Explorer out of the way, just up on the control arm. Some stuff you got to go take and tie it up out of the way or use a bungee strap. And there's our outboard pad. Same as the other side. The outboard pad had a lot more wear on it than the inboard pad which that's about every car i've ever owned and now this inboard pad you can see that is down more than the outer and that wouldn't have been too far that was soon going to just crack up and break the lining what little bits left and then would have been marking your rotor Alrighty, and with the other side we slid our pins out and now we're going to get these anti-rattle clips there's the top one out, get the bottom one out, maybe, maybe not, maybe it's going to stay stuck, but I do believe a little wiggling and jiggling. Uh, yeah, yep, it has a sense of humor. There we go, it's out of the way, and back over to the workbench again to clean our brake sliding pins. In addition, as with the other side, they just basically need just wipe some of the old grease off with a paper towel and going to take and like I say just put some new grease on it but you have nothing out of the ordinary on these like I say I've worked I've already as on those I've said to were rusted fast then I've had some times I can get them out and then sometimes I've heated them I've taken and actually heated them work back and forth trying to grab them with like a pipe wrench and they'll snap off and then you're down to again sometimes you can buy a caliber bracket but the catch, the bracket a lot of times only within a couple dollars of, well, the brake caliber, so sort of a no-brainer. When you're within about ten dollars, you might as well just buy the whole works and be done with it. Alrighty, there we go. Most of the grease wiped off. I want to say it's close enough. We're going to put more of this grease that came with it. Again, if I wasn't doing this video, I'd just be dipping into my grease container over there and be done with it, but... For the purpose of the video, and in case somebody does buy this exact patch, we'll make it authentic. Although I still am adding some of the other grease. What else I've used in the past on these, and I could say it's expensive, and I don't know where to, I do have some, is anti-seize. But I could say I've used grease, and eventually, I don't care if you live in the Northeast, they still seem to end up rusting fast at some point. If you, again, my own stuff, I usually once a year, right around inspection, take them off, re lube them up, and it seems to keep them alive. But if you let it go two, three years, they'll all end up stuck if you drive where there's, again, road salt, 
and nasty weather and all that good stuff. And there we're packing our extracurricular grease in, the good old Napa wheel bearing grease to lube it up good. Can't have uh, enough lubrication on these actually, as I've sort of tried to emphasize. Yeah, I know when I made the video, I was just going to do the one side more or less like repeat, but I have tried being thorough and again looking at stuff from both sides and that gives you a different viewpoints points of view of the how stuff does go together and now we're wiping the this i didn't show on the first side is this taking some wax and grease remover and cleaning the brake dust off the rotor yeah the purpose of doing this is just get rid of some of the old brake dirt and that off the rotor so not the the new pads will situate in better although it's probably not a necessity with using the same rotors now if you buy new rotors yeah you definitely have to do this because they have that protective coating on them to keep them from rusting yeah the easiest way to do this is with two rags one soaked with the cleaner and another one to dry and just do a section and here on the outside it's easy access you can get to the surface of it now you'll see here shortly the river this is a little trickier to do without pulling it the whole way off because of the caliber brackets now already in here is looking at the rear of the rotor and you can see it has that light rust coating on it and if you watch here it's definitely the cleaners taking that rust off and then there's a drying rag and just keep repeating turning it a little bit at a time again the option is to pull that bracket off but there are a lot of times those bolts are pretty tight and since i wasn't putting the rotor on i did not really feel like messing with it Furthermore, it is astonishing how this little bit of this wax cleaner, I mean, yeah, wax and grease cleaner and this rag's just wiping this rust off, no problem at all. And what else is amazing, the vehicle was drove the day before it sat in the garage overnight that this form basically sitting overnight in the garage. You gotta love a humid climate. It's summer here, probably about 80 to 85 percent humidity will do it every time. Alrighty, here one little last section here didn't get, and then we'll be past that step. Here, drying her off one last time, and here's our time to put her pins back in. I'm sliding the bottom one in first, and again, this is pretty much cut and dry, and there that's in, and you can see how nice it's just like the other side, it springs back and forth, and there's the top one back in, and same deal. Just try it out, make sure it works easy, and here back down to our anti rattle clips. Yeah, this is the lower clip in the bottom part of the caliber bracket, but I'm having it looking down on it there, a little bit different shot of putting it in. And like I say, there's right there, line that up with the middle. Like I say, that tab right in the middle, which I think that shows it pretty much what I was trying to get to. This sort of, you got to push a little bit to get it in place, but there that one is back in. However, I'm not happy how it's set in. I'm going to take a screwdriver here and push down on that a little bit more. And now I am convinced it's locked into place. In theory, once the pads are in, it's not going anywhere. And then we're putting the upper one back in. Although, one more to caution, if that tab, even if it's locked in, is rubbing the brake rotor going around, it's going to make a lot of noise and drive you insane when you first drive the vehicle. So to save tearing the back apart, just be sure it isn't also rubbing the brake rotor, which pushing it with the screwdriver here, you see how it's bending up in. There I am. There you can see exactly what I've been talking about all along on it. Yeah, it's been a battle with the light and that, getting it that I'm satisfied with you saying it, but there you go. And now we're going to take and put our little dab of grease at the top of our brake pads, just as we did on the other side. And as always, if you have any questions or anything during while watching the video, feel free to contact me in the comments below. And like I say, or I'll put a link to my website in the description and you can use the contact form with any questions, concerns, or tell me it's the best or slash worst how-to video you've watched on YouTube. Again, we have broad shoulders. We're open to everything. And already we slid our outboard pad back on. Now we're going to take here and once we find it and do the same deal put our grease on the inboard pads and get ready to install it nevertheless i do hope you really do truthfully find it useful and again any bad time i can help save somebody a dollar instead of running to the garage especially the big shops it'll come in and i can say this is a fairly if you have a little common sense and some basic tools anyone can handle this job 
If you don't already own one, the most costly investment on the job as far as tools is the floor jack itself. Although that's an aluminum floor jack, I've had it for a couple of years. I bought it at Harbor Freight. I'll put a link in the description to one like it. And there we're working on putting the inboard pad back in. It's a little bit being stubborn, but yeah, I got to get this that little rear press forward. And I'm giving you a view here from in behind. And right there we got it. Furthermore, you're going to need to invest in a way to press these caliper pistons in. And I think this tool was around, I want to say, $15. Like I made the comment earlier, a C-clamp will work. But in this case, you actually, because of the dual pistons, you will need two of them. Which I think is just as far ahead to buy the tool. Because you can also use the tool on a single piston caliper. And there we go again, just tighten them in. And kick up the speed here a little bit and get the job done. Yeah, I know for years I just used a C-clamp on this, but the uh, days of the dual piston caliber sort of did inspire me to invest in the tool. And I'll put a link in the description. I don't even remember where I bought this one anymore, but I'm sure one of my favorite places to shop for tools, Harbor Freight has them, and I'll put a link in the description on that also. And we're just about have it compressed in where it needs to be. And as stated in the first part, they should press in easy. If not, there is a problem. Yeah, I try to cover a wide variety of topics in my how-to videos, from simple maintenance items like this to I uh, will in the future here have a major project one for uh, somebody that's in the professional body work. I'll be doing a video on installing a rocker panel, the complete rocker panel in a four Taurus. But okay, they're pressed back in. Take our junk brake pad out that we used to support it and just slide it back on the bracket again. No big deal. There we got our pins back there. They wanted to stick a little bit going into place. But there. And those are like a flat side on them that sits against the caliber on those pins. And once they're in, then we'll start our bolt in just as before. Oh, it's worthy of mention. And if you look to the right here in this, that stabilizer, you can see it's damp. What that is is brake fluid. When I compressed the pistons in the calibers, the brake fluid gushed out. Now, what makes that happen is when you start the brakes pads go down, the fluid more of it stays in the caliber and less in the master cylinder. And somebody apparently over time added brake fluid to it when it was down. And when I again pressed the pistons back in, it pushed some out. It doesn't really per se bother me any, but if it's something that bugs you, if you've added brake fluid in that situation, you can take like a little syringe and pull some out first. But I just thought I'd mention that. Okay, now we're tightening our bolts back up, starting with the top one. Yeah, pretty much all downhill from here in the project. Yeah, we're getting that one tightened up. Then move on down below. And we'll tighten this one up. Yeah, probably about the biggest thing on this whole job there. It's a little bit tiring. Working down, stooped down at the side of the vehicle and bending around back, reaching in behind. But I can say unless you're doing it every day. Okay, given that the final tightening up our bolts like we did earlier and again i'm using a 3 8 drive ratchet nothing you don't need no big heavy duty ratchet on the other end you don't want the little quarter inch drive and there it is all in place just showing you a little view of it and looking down th through there you can see the barely well, our shadow got in the way and there's our pad sit in the clips how they should look and now it's time to put the tire and the wheel back on yeah, these are sort of heavy, lummoxy, tires and wheels, these 17 inch. I don't know, but then again, that's old school thinking, whatever happened. I know, like, in the day, like, the stuff back in the 70s and 80s, full-size Suburbans and pickups just had 15 inch tires and wheels, but that's not fashionable anymore. Or maybe the tires, they couldn't sell them for enough money. But anyhow, we're getting it back on the 17 inch and got it lined up on the lug nuts studs. And here we'll just have to fight again to reach the lug nuts down in the recess grooves and the holes in the wheel. You could actually, again, I like doing stuff the hard way at times. You could actually take the lug nut, put it in the socket and start it on. Not with the impact wrench, but just by using the socket and with your hand but again this way you get on the first couple threads you know it's not cross threading and that's always another mess and don't really feel like changing one of those today lug nut studs tear this back apart and we got uh, about ready to go one more to start on 
And we'll step back around here out of the way and we'll take our impact wrench and we'll go work on the star shape pattern and tighten them all up initially there. It's working like we did on the other side. Now you can hear the little lug nut wrench at work. Now we'll go grab our jack and we'll get this jack stand out from under. We're just about done, but there is two more steps to stay tuned for if you don't know. But after we get this down off the jack, I meant to say get the jack stand out from under. Yeah, down off the jack. Yeah, what am I saying? Haha, <laughs> okay, we got it lifted up. It should soon clear. Yep, it's there. And we'll just slide them on out. And oh yeah, and be sure you always do use jack stand. And then we'll just let it down here, hopefully gentle as can be. Yep, not bad. There's just some of that brake fluid mess I said about from earlier. And out comes the jack. And the two steps I was saying about. One of them is torquing the wheels up to the proper torque with these aluminum wheels. And the torque is 86 to 114 foot-pounds. I have my torque wrench set right on 100. I think it's a good number. And the reason of the importance of that, with the heat net with these aluminum wheels, if you don't torque them right, two things will happen. One, they'll come loose when you're driving, which isn't good. I've had it happen. Or two, a month or so down the road, you won't be able to get them off okay now we're going to hop in the vehicle fire this up and this is probably even more important than the lug nut step after you've relined brakes because those pistons are pushed back in the caliber when you first push the pedal well it's going to the floor which just gradually keep pumping it and you'll feel it starting to build back up until you get a good solid brake pedal again and you can see that it takes a few tries and i'm pretty much convinced on it and there we have done it uh, you can pat yourself on the back, treat yourself to a refreshment of your choice, and uh, stay through and finish the job. Alrighty, thank you for watching. Glad you stopped by the channel.